The entire universe is composed of matter. A basic concept of the structure of matter is essential for the understanding of electricity because the very force that holds matter together has an electrical nature. There are many different substances, each a combination of some of the 92 known chemical elements. Just as yeast, flour, salt, sugar and shortening are the ingredients used in making bread, so are the 92 elements the ingredients of all matter. And if one of these elements is reduced to its purest final form, its smallest unit would be an atom. No one has ever seen inside an atom. However, we think of it as a system of electrons circulating around a heavy nucleus at almost inconceivable speeds. In order to explain the principles with which we are concerned in this story, let's assume that we can stop the action within the atom. And further, let's acknowledge that this is a symbol representing the atom and not an attempt to show it as it actually is. It is impossible to show the correct relative proportions of an atom on this screen. For example, if an atom could be as large as the United States, one of its electrons would be only about 100 feet across. Therefore, to tell our story, we must resort to a symbol. Then we can think of the atom as being a group of relatively light, small particles arranged around a heavy nucleus. These are particles of electric energy. The lighter ones, the electrons, are negative electric charges. And the heavier one, the nucleus, carries positive charges. Normally, a state of balance is maintained within the atom by a positive charge in the nucleus equal to the total negative charge of the electrons. And when the atom contains its normal number of electrons, it is said to be in electrical balance, to be in a neutral electrical condition. It is possible, however, to disturb this normal balance whereupon the unbalanced atom assumes an electric charge. Too many electrons will produce a negative charge. Too few will throw the balance onto the positive side. In order to visualize better the effect of this, let's introduce a color code in which the positive charge or an absence of electrons is represented with red and the negative charge a predominance of electrons with blue. Then an object that is in electrical balance will be purple, an equal part of each of the positive and negative charges. We have been concerned so far with the electrons within individual atoms. Now let's see what happens when two or more neutral atoms come together. The outside electrons will no longer move exclusively within their original atoms, but will circulate about both atoms at once. And if we bring many such atoms close together, as in a piece of metal, then many electrons detach themselves from their original atoms and move freely throughout the metal. As long as the metal has its normal number of electrons, it is electrically neutral. But like an individual atom, it can lose some of its electrons and become positively charged. Or it can pick up more than its normal number of electrons to become negatively charged. The electrons always try to get from a negatively charged body to one that is positively charged in relation to it. And if they are brought together, the electrons will flow from one to the other until both objects are equally charged. 
the establishment of unbalanced charges in matter is, in all instances, the principle of the generation of electricity. To illustrate further this principle, let's analyze the action within a cell, a simple source of electric energy. A piece of zinc is suspended in a suitable container. Its atoms are neutral until a chemical solution is added. Then some of the zinc atoms go into the solution, leaving a few of their electrons behind in the metal. The zinc becomes strongly negatively charged. Now a piece of electrically neutral copper is put in a chemical solution in another container the copper will become very weakly negative. Since the copper has a smaller negative charge, it is positive with respect to the zinc. And if the two metals are connected, the electrons will surge from the zinc to the copper and the charges will become equalized. This momentary current has little practical value. However, if we now connect the solutions the charges in the solutions will become equalized and the metals or terminals will be charged. We will then have an unbalanced condition of the electrons in the metals capable of producing a continuous flow of useful electric current. Let's review the action of the atoms and their electrons in a piece of metal where we saw swarms of electrons moving freely in all directions about the atoms. Substances in which this takes place are good conductors of electricity. If an outside electric pressure or voltage is applied to a conductor, the electrons will move predominantly in one direction. The effect is that electrons move from the negative to the positive terminal. This is the electric current. Current, or amperage, then is the number of electrons that pass a given point in a given time. For example, copper has low resistance. It permits the electrons to flow freely with few collisions and is therefore a good conductor. Iron offers more resistance than copper. Collisions with the atoms are more frequent. In some substances, no electrons are free to move around as in the metal. All of the electrons stay with their atoms so that no current can flow. These substances are the insulators, glass, porcelain, rubber, and many others. The collisions that the electrons have with the atoms set the atoms into more violent vibration. This makes the metal hotter. If there are enough of these collisions, the metal will radiate heat and light. Heat and light from electrical sources, then, can be obtained as the result of resistance in some metals. And now we may summarize that the billions and billions of atoms of which the universe is built are composed of positive, and negative electric charges. That these charges are normally balanced in matter. That by unbalancing these charges, electric energy is made available. That the urge of nature to restore this balance creates electric pressure. And that the response to this urge, the action of the restoration of the balance is a flow of electric current. The flow of electric current, then, is simply the movement of electrons away from objects that have acquired a negative charge to objects whose charge is relatively positive. It's this principle that has made possible the countless electric devices which contribute to the comfort and fulfillment of richer and happier living today. Devices which will expand that to unlimited horizons in the future. Devices whose operation 
is dependent upon nature's design for matter, demanding that matter itself shall always seek a state of new electrical balance.